Hello, this is Dr. Behrang Eskarian. I am an associate professor at Washington State University, the mechanical engineering department. I am also a licensed professional engineer in the state of Washington, uh, a PE, and my area of uh, expertise is thermal fluids. So this is uh, a video about how to solve um, a problem in the area of external flow over a flat plate. Uh, before watching this video, I um, strongly suggest that you go back and uh, look at those two videos that I, um, where I explained the um, local friction coefficient and uh, average friction coefficient and five different categories of problems when it comes to external flow over a flat plate. I provided a link to those videos in the description. Um, if you already have watched them, then you're good to go. Let's just do the problem. If not, go back, watch those. So you know when I say category one, category two, three, four, five, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, let's do the problem. So go ahead, read this problem. Okay, so we have liquid water. Liquid water goes over a um, flat plate. The flat plate is made from uh, cast iron, apparently. So this is definitely going to be some turbulent flow, no matter what Reynolds number is. And we have to use a specific equation, but we need to know what category it falls into. It's either category four we discussed, or it's going to be category five. It's not going to be one, two, three. So I don't think it's going to be any of those. So here's the plate and the velocity, and the velocity V is uh, supposed to be five meters per second based on the information we have. This is um, W is two meters, and the whole L, the length of this um, is uh, how many? Oh, one meter. Okay. L is one meters. This is supposed to be cast iron. So in order to solve this problem, we need to actually find the value that the, the density of water, we know it's liquid water, is going to be 1,000 kilograms um, per meters cubed, but we need to find epsilon, the roughness for cast iron. Your best bet is to go to the Moody chart. The Moody chart, you might ask, okay, well, this is external flow. Moody chart is for internal flow. Yes, I know. But uh, here's the thing, in Moody chart, uh, there is there's a part there's like a small table to the like the left um, lower corner of Moody chart that shows it's a small table that shows the roughness for different uh, you know materials, including cast iron. Uh, so let's take a look at that real quick to pick the value for epsilon. All right, here's the Moody chart. If you look at the Moody chart, I mean, yes, this is for internal flow. This is external flow. The problem we're solving is external flow. So, you know, we don't care about Moody chart at this point, but we can find the values of epsilon from it anyways. And there are some other ta tables in fluid mechanics, but for me, it's just a very, you know, it's the go-to. I know where it is, so I, I'll, I'll go for it. Uh, look at cast iron. Cast iron, the roughness epsilon is 0.26 millimeters. Something you, you need to remember, this is not 0.26 meters. That would be crazy. 0.26 millimeters. It's a very common problem. Students forget to convert like millimeters to meters and then they get crazy numbers. So uh, keep in mind that epsilon for cast iron is 0.26 millimeters. Let's go back to the problem. Okay, we're gonna write epsilon equals 0.26 millimeters, or in other words, 0.26 times 10 to the negative third meters here. What we need to figure out is, is this gonna fall into category four or category five? So uh, category one was laminar, category two was mixed flow, but you know it was smooth surfaces. Category three was kind of smooth surfaces, but the boundary layer was tripped, or it could be used for uh, you know less rougher surfaces somehow, you know, like copper or something. And um, this, I would try uh, the category four 
but I'm not sure. So I have to, you know, calculate a couple of things before I get to that point. So first, uh, the, the first step in any of these problems is always calculating Reynolds number. So I'm going to calculate Reynolds number first. And uh, Reynolds number in this case would be um, rho times V times L over mu. Let's see what do I have here. So rho is 1000 kilograms per meters uh, cubed times velocity, which is five meters per second, times uh, length, length is supposed to be one meters, over viscosity 0 0.001567 pascal second. We're going to calculate this Reynolds number. I already, uh, in fact, uh, calculated Reynolds number for this problem. So uh, Reynolds number that I calculate can calculate it too um, is 3.19 times 10 to the six. This number is more than 10 to the six. So, so far so good. Category four, if you remember, had two conditions. Reynolds has to be more than 10 to the six. And there is another parameter that we have to double check and that is epsilon over L. Epsilon over L has to be more than 10 to negative fourth in order to be able to use that equation in category four. So let's calculate that. That is 0 0.26 times 10 to the negative uh, third meters over length, which is one meters basically. So when you have the value of you know, um, this, then you're gonna end up with just you know, 0.2.6 times 10 to the negative fourth which is more than 10 to the negative fourth. Based on these two conditions, this is a category four problem. So if it is category four problem, then I can use the right equations uh, that you know, come from category four. And uh, at the end of it, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna look at that graph also, the, the graph, the, the equivalent of Moody chart for external flow. So the equation that we showed in category four, again, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say category four, go back and watch those videos. Uh, you can find a link to those videos where I, where I categorize all these cases for external flow first and then come back here. Category four, the average friction coefficient uh, can, could be calculated using this equation, 1.89 minus 1.62, log 10, this is log 10 of epsilon over L and the whole thing power negative 2.5. So this is our equation and we're gonna use this equation. Um, based on this equation, we have 1.89 minus 1.62 log 10 of 2.6 times 10 to the negative fourth and um, the whole thing negative 2.5. I already calculated the value of uh, you know this. You can double check it using your calculator. And I got a value of 0. Uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6, 0, 8, 3. That's the value that I got for a friction coefficient, the average friction coefficient. Once I have the friction coefficient, you know, calculating the drag force is another problem. Drag force can be calculated using the general equation. General equation is friction coefficient times uh, the dynamic pressure like this times the total area. Total area in this case is L times W and L and W is one meter times two meters. That would be basically two meters squared, another problem. So the drag force is 0 0.006083 times one over two times 1000 kilograms per meters cubed times velocity, which was five meters per second squared times two meters squared. I already calculated the value of uh, F the drag force, you can go ahead and double check everything and calculate it. And I got a value of 152.1 Newton. That's the value I got. So this was a category four problem. Now, you might ask one question. We had that graph 
the graph was an interesting graph that uh, was the holy grail. The graph is supposed to give you all categories, categories one, two, three, four, five, all of them. It's not you know, easy to you know read the graph when you have an equation. You prefer to use the equation to get the you know the exact number. But um, let's just double check the graph, see if it is consistent with um, you know what we got here. So if you look at the value for uh, friction coefficient, I got 0 0.006 you know, something. This is the value I got. If you remember in that graph, you need to calculate the value of L over epsilon in the, for the graph, for the chart. For the chart you need to have, which is basically one over epsilon over L, right? which is one over 2.6 times 10 to the negative fourth. And if you calculate that value, is um, that value is going to be, I already calculated it, 3,846-ish. That's the value that you get. Now, keep this value in mind. We're going to switch to that graph and try to read that graph. Let's see what happens. All right, so this is the graph. This graph uh, is supposed to work for all categories of external flow, right? And um, for this category that we have, we have, um, let's see if I can show this on the screen, all right? Uh, for this particular graph, what was the Reynolds number that we got? It was 3.19 3 um, times 10 to the six. So that would be a value somewhere and in this area, that would be the value. And what was the value of L over epsilon? 3,800, somehow, somewhere close to 4,000-ish, right? So it's gonna fall in this area between 2,000 and 5,000. So that would be the value of, um, you know, the Reynolds number, it would be somewhere here. And it probably the, the graph for, for 3,800 would be somewhere here between 2,000 and 5,000. And it has to be somewhere uh, here. This is what I'm guessing that the value would be probably, I'm just you know extrapolating in my head that that value, that, that graph has to be somewhere here. So we can get the 4,000, something like this. And if, if in your head, uh, basically you kind of, you know, you, you think about that, that graph, um, it's probably some sort of you know graph like like this. Maybe the graph is going to be um, something like this. I'm I'm trying to draw that graph. Maybe it's something like this. You know, almost right. So when you think about it, I, the value that I got here is actually you can see the value that I got here. And I don't even have the graph, but I just guessed it's probably going to be something like that. So I use a different color now. Uh, it's going to be around 0 0.006. And the equation that I used gave me, you know, a more accurate value, 0 0.00608 something. So this shows that, uh, yeah, the graph works, but you don't have all the cases on the graph. You don't have like... Um, L over epsilon 3,800, which is what we calculated. So uh, if you can use the equations, if it falls into those four categories, definitely go, go for those four categories because it makes your life easier. And if it doesn't, then go to the graph and see what happens. That would be uh, you know, the case. So um, uh, this was category four. And um, uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I encourage you to subscribe to this channel because I try to uh, upload one video a day in the area of uh, fluid mechanics, heat transfer, pumps, uh, power plants, uh, thermodynamics, uh, thermal system design, you know, and uh, things like that. Well, thank you.